Let's get started. <laughs> oh. Hello, viewers. Today I am going to do stupid sh Deadline, what the hell was that? Stupid sh <laughs> Enough about that. Let's begin. Okay, MHA Chapter 365. It's a lot shorter than an average chapter and has significantly less bullshit in it. Nonetheless, we are a rant channel, so we are still gonna rant about it. Do take note that this will not be a full recap, just a compilation of things that don't make sense. But before we start with the rant, let me say a little something. Chapter 365 is yet another Handeman focused chapter. This got me wondering, why is the focus constantly just circulating between Handeman, Deadline, and Sunbut? It seems to me this is because these three are the only villains that can put up a decent fight and can't be beaten easily. Out of an entire army of villains, only three are actually significant. Superman is not exaggerating when he only mentioned these three. Because these three are really the only villains they must look out for. It's the final battle and literally 99% of the villains are irrelevant. Anyways, let's move on to the main rant. So we are gonna talk about three topics in this video. Paper Thin, Bunny Gal, and obviously a little bit of Handyman. Let's start with Paper Thin. It's already super convenient that he suddenly gained the ability to repair organs. But now he has an even more convenient disinfecting bubble. And said bubble is not even referenced in the final panel of the previous chapter. You can tell the creator is just making sh** up as he goes. It's almost as if he too has no idea how to beat Handyman. Also about the bubble. How did it stay intact with paper thin all throughout the fight? This guy can't even have pockets due to the nature of his quirk. Not only that. But he's also threading around the battlefield, and even got hit by a theoretical superman level punch. After all the damage he received, how come a literal bubble is still intact? Well to be fair the bubble is made by one of the most powerful beings in MAJ. Wash. That means it has divine properties by default. It's super special, and also completely invulnerable to any known form of physical damage. Also notice that out of all the heroes, it's this guy who has the bubble. This is because Manga, the other most powerful being in MHA, knew that the heroes will do field surgery later on, and told Wash to give a disinfecting bubble in advance. Okay let's move on to everyone's favorite half human and half lagomorph. Bunny Gal. <laughs> So about her losing yet another limb. What the creator is going for in this scene is make Bunny Gal look badass. And while a ton of people thought she looked badass, there's also a sizable amount of people that thought this is just plain gross and unnecessary. And I'm one of those people. Losing a limb back in the war arc felt natural. But here it just happened out of nowhere. The moment the focus shifted to her, she immediately lost an arm. Because the creator thinks this is the only way to make her look cool. And apparently almost everyone thinks looking like a deranged wild animal is very cool. Bunny gal doesn't need to lose any more limbs just to look badass. Just have her constantly evade the mega hands and land some hits. And it would accomplish the same thing. And she gets to stay intact. Here. Her recklessness just makes her look unprofessional and unskilled. And if it weren't for Wedgie, she'd just fall over and die in the most embarrassing way. Also about the super kick. I'm kinda noticing that every character present in the Handeman arena are pulling off super moves one after the other. Like there's some kind of hidden checklist. Makes sense since they all need to show off, because once Falcon gets there it's all over. Now let's get to the final topic. The obligatory Handeman rant. I gotta say, we've been seeing nothing but this guy over and over and over again. And I still don't know what the mega hands are supposed to do. Sometimes it filters all the hero equipment and leaves the hero intact. Sometimes it's just a minor inconvenience. Sometimes it deals damage. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it deals more damage to other characters. Sometimes it can bite off an entire arm. Sometimes it can only punch a small hole. 
This lack of consistency is directly matched with Handyman's lack of direction. Just look at how he consistently stops doing something the moment he starts making progress, as if the story really has no idea what to do with him. He stopped attacking the UA building after dealing some minor damage to it. He stopped growing after the people complained he's getting too heavy. He immediately ignored God after punching a small hole in him. He managed to catch Bunny Gal, and then do nothing to her for two chapters straight. Best part here is that he just keeps everyone at low health instead of outright dismantling them. So they could all have a quirk awakening later on. Also isn't this supposed to be a near complete deadline vessel? Then how come Handerman can just easily take over whenever he wants to? If you look closer, it's Handerman who's really on the pilot seat, and Deadline is just the co-pilot. Overall, the chapter's written like an average Handerman chapter, wacky, inconsistent, and with a clear lack of direction. But before we end I just gotta say this real quick. Why does the creator need to show Handerman shrugging off hits, and then make said hits only matter several chapters later? It's like he's deliberately pissing off the readers just for the hype. Deadline why are you being cringe? I just made a TikTok account. Deadline can you stop being cringe? Look who's talking. Fair enough. <laughs>